Close games are more fun and exciting to watch, but often you can learn even more from stomps, and this game is a good example of that. We're going to watch Puppy play position 5 Nature's Prophet and see how he helps his team win all 3 lanes and how he snowballs an early lead to a quick and easy victory. Right at the start of this game, Puppy is going to skill teleport and TP forward here to plant this deep ward. This is gonna give him some nice vision, see if couriers are coming here um, and he can possibly also see some rotations. And now he's gonna head here, and if you turn on the enemy vision, he briefly appears in vision here. So slight mistake, he should have walked like some, somewhere like here and then planted the ward. Um, so now they actually know that the ward is here, or at least they can suspect that the ward is here. But for some reason they're not really gonna do anything about it, not quite sure why, maybe they saw, thought he didn't actually ward there. Now whether you skill teleport a tree instead of one with position 5 Nature's Prophet is mostly a stylistic choice. TP gives you better warding and gives you greater flexibility, but the tree ends of course give you much more straight up fighting power in Something. early game laning. So Puppy is going to walk uh, uphill here and the reason he does this is he wants to go here, see he doesn't get shot by the tower, which means that there isn't any ward here or here. So um, um, he's not being chased by the enemy heroes, but it's also close to the rune spawn now, so um, this means that uh, the enemy can't really make it to the rune quite in time and we can see Puppy faking teleporting here and once it back off he just stays there and this pango didn't quite make it to the rune in time so they actually get three runes even though they don't really have a stronger rune fighting lineup. Puppy has gone for an opening build that is a little unorthodox but it makes a lot of sense. Headdress is a great item in lane uh, since the Oriole helps out with your um, sustaining lane and also gives a bunch of nice stats and it can also be built into Helm of the Dominator, into Pipe or into Mech and while Helm Nom is not really an usual item on uh, Nature's Prophet uh, the other two options, the Dominator and Mech, are very strong uh, but even if you don't upgrade it, it's still a uh, reasonable value item and Prophet requires less region than most other heroes because you can just uh, TP back and then teleport back into lane. But you still need some region, so uh, with this headdress build, you could only start out with one set of tangos, and after sharing out two, you only had one left. So the first item we bought was just another set of tangos, it just delivered for the courier. So, always very important to do that if you go for these. Uh, Sort of greedier starting item builds where you don't have enough region. Trian has quite good base stats, so he can trade here quite effectively, even without Trians. And he's sort of playing really aggressively because he has so much region and uh, because he has the ability to TP back home, which the enemy doesn't have. So you can trade here really, really effectively as profit. And of course, once you're level 2 and you have those pro these um, Trians, it's going to go even better for you. And the idea here is just to use so many Trians whenever you can. And he's a courier here, it's this easy kill here with the courier hit and his hero. And you just summon Treants whenever you can, you trade with the enemy. You try not to lose your Treants unnecessarily, but um, anyway, the most important thing is to get value out of those, uh, those Treants. And if it died, it doesn't actually feed that much gold and experience. Um, so it's only 16 gold and 20 XP, that's not too bad. So definitely just uh, be aggressive with those Treants. And. Um, but of course, no, don't uh, don't lose them unnecessarily. So you see him here um, playing very carefully, denying that one tree and two creeps. A TP's back here, picks up a magic stick as well as some extra tangos, and now it's back into the lane. And he TP's here very aggressively, um, maybe a bit too far forward here. Of course, summons his treants, but he gets lifted up, and he's in danger of dying here, so he has to be. Uh, careful here, lost a lot of HP then, didn't really get too much done. So don't overdo it here with the aggressiveness. Speaking of overdoing it with the aggression here, Puppy is quite low actually, he still has some stick charges but only 6. And um, he gets gone on here, uses stick charges but it's not enough. Of course he gets revealed because he's playing his Bloodseeker. So definitely not what you want to have, but at least it allows Faces Void to get this kill here. So it's uh, guess an even exchange. And Faces Void very smartly drops his item here for uh, puppy to pick up once he has respawned and he also drops a healing self uh, Puppy now actually seeing the items now Hopefully um, He hasn't actually seen them so 
a bit awkward here, but he does see them now eventually, and now he actually teleports in here and even bought a sort self of his own um, for this void and gives him this extra self, so now that void is back to having enough region. Six minute runes are about to come in, and um, it is Prophet TPs here, finds an invis rune. Uh, Shadowfin comes in here, so he blocks it with his body and um, he follows this Shadowfin, summons Treants, does some uh, passable blocking with the Treants. Uh, keeping the Shadow Fiend from running back to his base and with all these heroes showing up that is an easy kill and the enemy mid laner dies and Puppy is able to pick up some uh, uh, sits here uh, very nicely of course if he can find this farm definitely take it. Puppy is now wrapping around here on the bottom lane the Snapfire also coming in so they're outnumbering the enemy heroes and if you have some sort of lineup where you don't have a lot of disable, it's important to make these positional moves where you're coming in, cutting off the enemy retreat path, so that you can't just run away when they outnumbers. So they go on this Rubik and they try to kill him. He's very low, tries to walk, walk away here, but um, he is going to die here thanks to the vision that the native's brother provides. Puppy now in a little bit of trouble, but he can walk away here and snaking doesn't want to commit for Puppy because if he, if he did go for the aggressive swashbuckle forward, Puppy would probably die, but uh, so would snaking. And um, so Puppy now teleporting away, of course he doesn't want to give that Bloodseeker any more boosts. He comes in here, uh, gets handed the bottle here from the Batrider and refills it from the Fountain region. Um, always something you need to keep in mind when you're playing Nettles Prophet, you can easily refill those bottles. And now we used to go for an aggressive move on this Chen. And um, Chen kind of gets away here. They're trying to chase him here with the Bat Rider. Going pretty deep here. And um, uh, Chen is going to fall here. But the problem is that this uh, Bloodsig is now coming in. There's no mana for TP on this Bat Rider. And Bat Rider is going to fall. So that's not worth it, definitely. Uh, Poppy can stick around here for a little bit here. There's not really anything that this Bloodseeker can do to him. Uh, Poppy can always just run away with his boots. And like these creeps are a bit annoying, but they don't really do that much. So he can easily pick off these last hits on these melee creeps. And now he's going for a kind of cheeky claim on this outpost. But this blood ride comes in, so he has to run away here. And uh, he sees his courier flying in here. He can easily snipe this courier and then just teleport out. Uh, cutting it very close here by not using this uh, magic wand, but he does make it out, and um, that is a, a successful escape. Lotzinger goes on our friend the Bat Rider here. Bat Rider stays still here, trying to survive. The puppy comes in, gets out, out of the Blood Rider very importantly. They go on Rubik because he's a softer target, and they indeed do get that kill. But of course, Bloodseeker escapes, and now they can start to pressure this tower. Although, of course, this Bloodseeker is uh, still a danger, even though he doesn't have his ultimate. Um, so you, you can't really dive here or anything like that, but you can definitely stay in the lane here as Poppy and uh, get as many of these last hits as you can. Because just because you're playing in person 5 doesn't mean that you're not allowed to farm. It just means that other heroes have higher priority. It doesn't mean that you have no priority to farm. Meanwhile, in the middle lane here, there's a fight brewing. Lycan goes on this Shadow Fiend and see a very aggressive TP from Poppy here uh, behind the tower in the vision and these offensive TPs are good if you're pretty sure that you're going to win this fight but in this case it was a bit too aggressive from Poppy and he dies and that's a Lycan ulti wasted that's a kill fed here and that's never something you want to see here even this Dark Summoner is in a bit of trouble here and uh, this of course feeds a lot of gold when this gets killed. There's soon a gold in the uh, maws of the enemy, so a very unsuccessful fight here in the mid lane. But despite all that, we can see the rating they're still pulling ahead. In part, of course, because of all the action that Puppy has enabled here with his global presence. Puppy's going to have a power threat here, which is a good item even on support profit. It just adds a lot of tankiness and just overall combat ability in the early game. Just makes you a lot stronger at brawling. And that is something you want whether you're a support profit or offline profit. And he's just minding his own business here, farming this lane. And meanwhile, two of his allies are smoked behind him. He gets gone on 
And this uh, Bloodseeker gets chrono very nicely done here on the edge of the chrono. Uh, you see also a counter chrono from Rubik, but doesn't really do much. And um, they keep chasing here. Puppy teleports forward. As you said, if you're winning the fight, you will teleport forward, cut off the enemy's uh, retreat path. And thanks to Puppy's help, they get both those kills. And now they can just go straight for this T1 tower because of those T1 towers don't have backdoor protection. And the Treants to tank for you, you don't need regular creeps. And so they just keep pushing this tower and just forcing them to fight and they're just not ready yet to fight. And um, mu much of that is of course the strength of that uh, Batrider as a mid-hero who's of course very aggressive early game fighting mid-hero but also Nature's Prophet of course very strong in early game fighting. Puppy just TP down here and for some reason Pango and Shen think they can go on him even though they have almost no mana. But a Rubik appears, refills the mana with mana boots, and now they think they can do something. Uh, Pango goes for his ultimate, but Puppy evades him quite smartly. And with reinforcements arriving here from the Lycan, Lycan gets the 10 kill here. Meanwhile, Puppy is just chasing here. He doesn't have teleport on cooldown um, right now, so he can't teleport offensively. Um, so they get those two kills, and but then Snaking for some reason decides to go in here and gets tossed back, gets stunned and is killed. So they get those three kills and now they can uh, put pressure onto this tower. And with the tower destroyed, Poppy has enough gold for his Glimmer Cape, which is an excellent first item on Profit because uh, it's just a, a strong defensive item and you need some, some sort of defense against the uh, Heroes like um, Bloodseeker and the Pangolier can go on you. Of course, it also helps a lot against all the magic damage in the enemy team. And an item like Full Staff doesn't work quite as well against the Bloodseeker because you don't want to have Full Staff someone who's been ruptured. But of course, a Glimmer Cape works just fine. Puppy and Batrider are showing in lane here. Meanwhile, the rest of the team is smoked up. They're going to try to invade the enemy jungle and see if they can find some heroes. They see these Chen creeps. Um, there's a very nice uh, chrono here from Boy. It's going to be an easy double kill. Meanwhile, um, Puppy is uh, bringing up the rear. He's just going to hit this Pangolier. He's so low. You don't need to fear a Pangolier if he's so low. And uh, Shadow Fiend tries to get out of here, but uh, Puppy uh, holds him in place. And that is an easy team wipe. And with his team wipe, they can just easily end the game in a couple of minutes. So this is how you play support profit. You make a lot of space all over the map. You try to win as many lanes as you can. And um, if everything goes as well as it does in this game, you can get a very easy victory. Um, and you see it's uh, 60 minutes in, they're 13k ahead. Of course, usually it's not going to go quite as well. But even if you're not having quite as good as a game, and profit as a hero can make a lot of space. Um, can make a lot of split pushing happen, a lot of great warding. Definitely support profit a hero you should try out. And um, if you enjoyed this video, give it a like, share it with your friends, and subscribe to this channel for more content on Nature's Profit and other micro heroes. And before you go, check out my video on position 3 Nature's Profit and Overless Villain. I'll see you there.